Welcome to the Building Stronger Agents podcast, where we dive into what makes the best agents, teams, and brokers thrive. Today, we are interviewing one of my friends. I've been excited to get him on here with me, Brad Vanderwall. He's in Calgary, Canada. And Brad sold $600 million worth of real estate last year, 1,250 transactions. Uh, makes me look like I'm sitting still and never get out of bed. And today, we're going to find out how he did it. What's he all about? And um, what we can all do to get better and maybe be a little bit like Brad. So, Brad, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. I don't think anybody wants to be like me right now. I was at a wedding, so I'm pretty hungover. So I don't know if you want to be me right at this exact moment, but maybe down the road. (laughs) But for those of you who aren't seeing this on YouTube, he has an amazing mustache. Not only is he very (laughs) successful, but he's good looking and rocks the mustache. Just for the the next week, and I'll probably get rid of it. The wife hates it. (laughs) I want to hear all about you, man. So yeah, you've man. been in the business 12 years, right? So how did yeah. it all start? Uh, like anything, it starts with a girl, I think. Not my wife now, but I looked at myself. I was 29 years old and I'm like, I'm a loser. So uh, I was I was still bartending, nothing against bartenders, but that's I just felt personally that I needed to change. Went and got into real estate. I'm like, I, you know, if I'm going to find the right person, I, I can't be a bartender for the rest of my life. And I was always destined for greater things. So Kind of went and did that my first year. I started April 1st, 2009. So I guess it's 13 years ago now. That first eight months, there was 5,500 real estate agents in the city of Calgary. And it was one of the worst economies that we've ever had. And I ended up being the top 100 real estate agents. So in eight months for the whole year and everybody else had a full year. So I kind of knew that that was the path I went down and, you know, kind of had a team, was on a team for the first little while and then left, started my own team and, and haven't looked back ever since, to be honest. Were you a solo agent to begin with when you jumped off the team you were on? No, actually. I, I brought one of my best friends, Matt, who I met in the course. He actually came with me because I didn't know how to input a listing. So I'm like, all right. So um, he came by and I had too many buyers and leads and the rest is history. So I kind of went and started a team. Like As soon as I left the team, I started one, got an assistant, kept it pretty small for a while, You know, maybe two or three agents. And then kind of since I transitioned to eXp last year, uh, we kind of blew this thing up. And where were you before? I was at Remax. My claim to fame is I was the number one team at the number one Remax office in the world. Was I the number one team in the world? No, but (laughs) I was at the number one office in the world and I was the number one team there. So it was a cool play on words that I got to use to market for a little while. And I was kind of worried. Truthfully, when I left to go to EXP, I'm like, oh my gosh, what that's going to look like. But in 2021, we did, uh, no, sorry, in 2020, we did 300 deals. And then in 2021, we did 1250. So needless to say, the brand is completely irrelevant. Right. And for those that say that you go to EXP, I don't, I don't want to make this all about EXP, but no, um, clearly moving to EXP didn't hurt your business. No, no, not at all. <laughs> yeah. I went from six agents to 35 in, in 18 months and I did 1,250 transactions. Well, that's no, that's not true. I've probably done 2,000 transactions in the 18 months I've been with EXP. So did you set out to start a large team? Was that your goal initially or did it just happen organically? No. It just happened. Like I hate running my team and my team knows it. So I don't think it was ever the intention. And I think that now I, we had a culture shift a couple of weeks ago and I sat them all down. I'm like, this is how this team is going to run. It's been a lot better, but not a lot of agents on my team. Cause I don't really hold them accountable. It's, I don't believe in that, nor do I want to, I don't want to be their babysitter. So I just kind of like, Hey, you know, you know, all the things that I teach you, if you need me, reach out to me. And that's kind of how I have it. Now I'm starting to do, you know, some trainings a few times a week for them and 37 agents. I only had three people show up. Like it's just, wow. it's bananas. So um, for agents that are listening to this, that may have a small team. Yeah. And you said you grew rapidly last year. If you were starting over again, or if you were talking to an agent that wanted to scale to a large team, what are some important first steps? Being extremely systematic and having systems is the biggest one. You'll fumble Expound your way. Expound on that. Expound on that. What does that mean? Sure. So like, um, you know, an onboarding system, like when somebody comes onto your team, it's the same thing. You get them their business cards, for example, then you get them their marketing, you you, your your assistant orders them signs or whatever you're doing for your team and and having systems that way, having some kind of training for them. And if you don't have training for them, find a trainer, find a coach, find somebody to come in and help your agents. But also how do you want to run your team and what you want your team culture to be is a big thing. Like, there's some teams that I know of that they're very strict. They have to make two hours of calls every day. They have to be on here and that. Decide what you want your team culture to look like. Because once you start it, 
it's hard to shift it. Like, it's really yeah, hard to yeah. be like, it, it's really hard for me to all of a sudden be like, Oh, now I need everybody to come into all these mandatory meetings. Cause that's not the team the kind of team I've had. So they're like, well, Brad, that's not why I'm here. So, you know, make sure that when you're creating a team or creating your culture, that you do it from the beginning. Now things are going to change as you expand. You're going to notice you're making mistakes. That being said, definitely have a vision of what you want it to be and, and, and what you want the, the expectation that you're going to have from your agents. Because um, if you deviate from that, it's going to be hard to bring the, to, to steer the, the course back around. Very good point. It's like if you hire, a, I remember years and years and years ago when we started Penny Real Estate, I hired an assistant. And uh, I didn't tell her at the beginning that I also wanted her to clean the bathroom. So about three months later, I said, hey, can you start cleaning the bathroom? She looked at me like I'd asked her to go outside and change the tires on my car. Right. And uh, I realized then if I would have told her when I hired her, by the way, part of your job once a week, you have to clean the bathroom. It would have been a done deal. But like you said, you can't ever go backtrack and start adding things on because it changes their whole perspective of the, of the job and your expectations of them. Makes it hard. Definitely, definitely makes it hard. Like if you want mandatory meetings or, you know, whatever it is that you want to incorporate into your team, make sure you do it from the beginning. Now, again, things are going to change, especially people are just starting a team. More people are going to come on. There's going to be more headaches. I get that, but have at least an 80 to 90% clear direction on how you want to have a team. And if you don't know how you want to run a team, talk to people that are running teams and what, what they're, how they're successful, what makes them successful, take notes and take from that, what you want to incorporate into yours is what I would do for anybody thinking of starting a team. Right. So I've always had a small team, you know, my team's six managing a team of managing is a bad word. So I don't manage my team. We're all partners, just like you and your people. But when you say like the culture of the team, give us an example, like if it's going to be lead driven or if we're going to all work on uh, relationships or is it that sort of thing? Yeah, I think that's some of it, like making it lead driven, if that's what you want to do, making it again, relationship driven, however you want to do it. Of course, I don't, I don't buy leads for my team. I teach them how to grow a business and not rely go. on that and make relationships, right? So we talk me, about if, that every week, yeah. whoever's listening, you don't want to become lead dependent. You'll just become, it's a really bad road to be on when you're just dependent on buying leads. And it's tough and a lot of people do it and that's okay. That was a big part of my business and how I started it. But now we do different things from, you know, I do first time home buyer seminars via Zoom. So that's kind of the, that's kind of the one well, of the only things. That's pretty cool. How do you get people to go to those? I have a whole company. So I actually sell it. So for anybody who wants it, I'm going to plug myself. Um, there's yeah, a course that, that, you, that you can have and it's fantastic. I'm not very tech savvy. So for me, you know, having this, and especially now in a shifting market right now, people are going to want buyers where before, you know, you didn't really want buyers and now in a shifting market, you do. Uh, it's really cool. The company's really cool. It started by myself and my business partner. So it started by a real estate agent. I'm just not tech savvy. So I gave these tech guys, my business partner, my vision, and, and they created it. Now it's a course that we walk through the whole thing with you, setting up your Facebook leads, the Zoom, getting your Calendly. Like it's literally like we have some clients that are in their late sixties and and aren't yeah. tech savvy at all that that are super excited because we walk you through it. You have your own customer service person the whole time you're going through this thing. So it's pretty cool. And I've made probably about $700,000 from that course alone and, and doing these wow. first time home buyer seminars via Zoom. Uh, why it's great. Show up rates are higher. The automation's there for texting, email, like all the notifications. So you you know you have more people to show up uh, at the end and you book a call with them. And what <laughs> I like about it is that you know if you get 100 leads, 50 show up, you know what I mean? Probably 50 show up to your, um, to your live event or to your webinar. And then of that, you know, maybe 10 book a meeting with you to talk about buying a home and then you'll close one or two of those. But what it does is it takes it the whole system and process. Otherwise you'd have to call those hundred leads, be calling them all the time, all the time, calling them right, all right, the time right. to try to get it. Now, you just get 10 people that want to book and then you close two or three. So you just get to talk to 10 and all 10 know who you are. So for those of you that are doing lead gen, it's like, oh man, nobody knows who you are. You're calling. It's like, no, I didn't sign up. And all the objections you hear were, that's not the case. And the cool thing is, is that if 10 people book on a call with you, there's still 40 people that would have showed up the next day. If you call all 40 of those people that didn't book with you just to find out why they didn't. And that's still a gold mine too, because some people like they don't, you know, why I wasn't quite ready or whatever their their whatever their reasons are. All forty of those people that you're calling now know who you are because you spent an hour and a half on the Zoom with them. It's very powerful. We have hundreds and hundreds of clients. Our satisfaction rates, I think, at about ninety eight percent. Good for you, dude. I mean, the point you're making is that you have. 
at the end of the day, our business has always been and will probably be for the foreseeable future, a belly to belly business about conversations. But how you get to those conversations, there's lots of ways to do that. And there's tons of different ways to do things too. If you had to build your team all over again, would you do it the same way? Oof, that's a loaded question. And what would like, uh, looking back, I mean, you're, you and I have become friends and you're one, you're a really smart guy and you don't mess around and you don't pull any punches, which I like some the same way, but looking back, are there things that you're upset, you know, with yourself about, or things that you would do differently that are you, like major things that stand out that, you know, I, if I had to do that again, I would not do it like this. Like maybe, you know, with staffing or yeah, the way sure. you, the way I you pick it, exactly. the way you recruit agents or. Yeah. Before I just recruit anybody with a pulse because I just needed help and that was terrible. Right. It's like, Oh, you're alive. Okay, great. <laughs> that, that ran into some issues. And they always lie and say they want to be a successful realtor. Well, I know. And 80% of the realtors suck. I still, I still ordering a t-shirt. Oh, I don't know about that. You got, you and I differ on that. I'm not quite as, uh, I'm not, I'm not quite as cynical, but they, uh, I've had some people, not now I have an amazing team now it's small yeah. and they're great. And we all respect each other. But I've had a couple of guys, three guys that I can think of over the years. They come in. I want to make three hundred grand a year. I'm going to crush it. I actually did nothing, like nothing Wait, at all. Absolutely. So, I have my own coaching program, man. I deal with this every day, every yeah. single day. I have people that I coach. One girl left my coaching program because she said it didn't work, and I'm just being candid. But she didn't do any of the work that I taught her. Nothing. Not even one thing. I asked her. I said. Okay, well, you know, I, I want some feedback. How is this not working? Why don't you tell me about the different things we talked about that you're going to go do? Well, Brad, I haven't done any of them. Oh, so it doesn't work, or you don't want to work, and that she didn't realize that commitment and taking action uh, is more important than. I mean, we God, we've got enough stuff out there with YouTube and all of the information out there. We've got we all know what we need to do, but mo- most real estate agents that don't survive, it's because they're just in- completely incapable or unwilling to take action. I think that's the biggest thing and that's the biggest part of it. And if I were to make some changes, going back to the question with the team, the one would be is, is to have a manager that manages the team. To, like an operations like, well, manager. Somebody, yeah. Somebody to like come in and, cause I know that I, I know the people on my team would be more successful if they had to show up for meetings, if there's certain things they had to do. Exactly. Big thing. But it like just talking about it right now makes me ill. Like I, I hate <laughs> doing it. Like I hate being like, did right. you make your calls? Or did you, like, that's not the leader that I am. And no. I sat my team down and I told them, I said, there's other teams out there that are great, that aren't mine. If you are looking for an accountability, if you're looking, that's not me. I'm here to support coach and mentor and teach you stuff. I'm not going to see if, if you're going to be going and doing it. And there are people that need that though. There's people that need that accountability piece. And I know that there's people on my team that if there was an accountability piece would be far more successful. I'm just not willing to do it because I don't want to, it's my team. But I, but I told them freely, like you can leave. And we had some, a few cultural issues, like the culture of the team and now they're fixed and stuff. But I, I just said, Hey, from this day forward, this is how it is. Like, this is the leader that you want me to be. I'm not that leader. So no hard feelings, you know, we can part ways since mm-hmm. then I, I reset the expectation for everybody. I mean, it's been a lot better. Accountability is huge for a lot of people. I mean, yeah. the reason that most of us are, I don't want to upset anyone, but fat, unhealthy, divorced, broke is because the vast majority of us have trouble keeping our eye on the ball for any, any length of time. I mean, that's just a, we're really good at developing bad habits, but very, not very good at all about developing and maintaining new ones. I think that's the majority of people. Like if you look at, yeah, it's humans in general. Absolutely. And you look at real estate and you look at the top real estate agents and some of the agents, they might not be the smartest agents. They might not, you know what I mean? But I've, what I, one thing I notice about every top agent when I interview them too, almost every single one is they have the grit. Like they Absolutely. just, they just go and do it and they just, they'll, they'll, they'll make mistakes and they'll do it again and they'll try something and they'll do it again. Like they're just getting dirty and, and, and just the grit that it takes to be at the top is, is what makes, in my opinion, is what makes a real estate agent in that top 1% to the 1% is you might not look at the person like they're the smartest, but they'll outwork anybody. And I think that that's a, that's a big part of how you can become super successful. Is they just want it and they'll do it's whatever. It's not that it's hard. Like. I mean, right. your average sale price is higher than mine. Ours is about 240, 250, but yeah. the average realtor sells seven homes. You got a whole week to sell a house. If you're willing to make calls and cut and you know build relate, however you want to do it, 
you know, if you every day you take time, this is what I did when my kids were growing up back in the day, I'm, you know, it's my 35th year as a realtor. So I don't have to do it as much now, although I still stay in touch with my, my people. I talked to a guy on Friday, the one that had his own brokerage, 65, amazing guy, Steve. He still has his top 150 list and he still calls for an hour a day. Yeah. 65. He's like, I'm just, he goes, I know that that's what it takes to keep my business growing. I'm like, dude, and you're still doing this after 43 years. He's still got his top 150 list. You know, yeah. it's, it's amazing to me. I so people, I was just gonna say, I show people all the time. Like I show them three or four different things to make money and to work three hours a day. Like actually, that's all you got to do. That's all you got to do is prospect for three hours a day. And if you, and, and I show them how to do it and it's, it's foolproof. If you just do the same task, like if you choose four different things that, for example, that I teach and you keep doing them every single day, it's a clear cut path to sell 60 plus homes a year. If you just maintain these these three or four things to do. When I was 24, 25, I sold 60 houses, got the Century 21 Centurion Award. And by the way, the reason I got that is because my nickname in the office, thanks to Leon Anderson, the rental property manager, he called me Flash in the Pan Penny. That was my nickname, which upset me a little. But all I had to do to sell 60 homes, my goal every day, and we had no internet, was to get one appointment a day. I knew if I made my calls and got one appointment in the afternoon, I call in the morning, and I try to get four to five appointments a week. If you get four to five appointments a week, you're going to sell a house a week. There's no way. There's yep. no way you won't. Because the business, yep. and I, I sound like a broken record. We're in a recession proof business. No matter how bad the market gets, the market generally sells at least 70 to 80% of the homes. You just have to get out there and get your part of it. And people are just shocked. We say the same things over and over again. Well, are you talking to anybody? Are you having conversations? Are you asking people if they want to move? Are you? Staying in touch with people, just checking in on them, and they look at you like you're, uh, you know, speaking Greek. Yeah, like the girl that I asked if she would clean the bathroom. It just like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. What, <laughs> so, what um, have to work. What does your staff look like? What do you have? I have great, What's your support I have great, system? I have great staff. I actually, you know, with this many agents, I actually only have I have two admins only. Ooh, I know it's a, wow. yeah, it's a little bit. What different. do they do? What are their jobs? One lady, her job is to just worry about the pre-construction because we sell a lot of pre-construction. So she makes sure that um, all the all the contracts are right to be sent to the clients. They're going back to the agents that we're getting paid on time. Like that's it. And then the other admin supports her with that. My main uh, admin, who's Nona, she runs the show. She does everything. Uh, you know, order signs up, down orders, pictures, measurements, inputs, listings, gets deposit checks. Like she runs the whole show. I'm very very lucky to wow. have. Have yet. So how many builders do you represent to get that many transactions? Well, we got, I ain't using the word lucky because it took me two and a half years to get this builder and harped on right. them all the time. But we had one major builder that, that we did 900 units with last year. I mean, we did, we had about 400 <laughs> units in January that we did. And then we did a bunch more units. And then he, uh, he canned us because of all, we, we introduced him to a bunch of people in Toronto. And uh, he let us go and he was like, and they're going to do probably 2000 units. That was one of the worst days I've had in real estate. Cause I got about a, I think I lost about $15 million worth of commission that, that day that uh, he decided to, to skirt us. But you know what? It's, it's okay. You learn from it. And then the very, you know, I had a pouty day that day, uh, got back. Pouty on the day. Yeah. A pouty day that day. And then I, you know, I, I, I did like, it's okay. And like, I talk about mental health a lot and, and it's a very important to me. I always talk about it on every single podcast that I'm on. And you know, mindset like, and staying yeah, keeping your head in the game is the most important thing. I just got back. Like, what am I going to do? I can't change it. I went back, got on the phone, found us two more buildings. So I found us another 175 units to sell, and you know, we're almost halfway sold up both of those already. So you just kind of get back on the horse, drive around. Are these giant chain. subdivisions? No, they're just they're they're condo buildings. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is Calgary is, is Calgary anything like Toronto? I've never been there. Is it a big? Uh, is no. it a big city like Toronto? It's big, like one point four, I think, or one point five. It's pretty big, but it's mm-hmm. nothing like Toronto. Nothing in Canada is like Toronto. Got it. So, there, but you still have a lot of land around you available. Oh my gosh! Yes, <laughs> yeah, like there's more than you will ever need. So you've got an endless supply of land to build on. If you know, as as the time goes on, literally, at like. It'd have to be the year freaking six thousand probably before we would <laughs> run out of stuff. Like it's, it's just countless, <laughs> countless farm after farm after farm after like 
there's agriculture all at the at where our city ends for hour, hour long drives in any direction. That's awesome. So, dude, what does your typical day look like as a team leader with 35 agents? And you're obviously, I mean, anyone listening to this knows you're a grinder. I mean, you just you just get it done. What does your typical day look like? Are you still list, Are you still working with buyers and sellers? Are you just what are you doing? I, I don't too much. Like, you know, I still do sometimes. My days are are still pretty long. You know, with with being at EXP and, and having a coaching program now, and I run seven other companies besides this. So it's it's just daily activities of honestly just maintaining relationships, finding new clients, getting new ideas. Like we're starting another company, selling um, a TikTok course just started a company that we're doing really well selling a YouTube course for real. And these are all for real estate agents. Like our, my business partners, when we started this YouTube course sales thing, my goodness, like there's agents that are making millions and millions from YouTube. Uh, we just show them how, and that's from like, that's from leads. That's not from like, you know, yeah, yeah. It's, not, it's not from the, the stuff that YouTube gives you. It's just from selling leads. So, you know, we got a bunch of courses that we're doing the coaching programs going really well. So that's the majority of it, man. I don't do too much resale anymore. I just try to go find really big, big victories now. Like I go to try yeah. to find big builders or starting companies or, you know, getting just big, big wins, doing the land development now. So anyone listening to this, you're not doing onesie twosies anymore. Not very I'm often. Trying not to. I'm trying not to. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, there is, you know, a side of it. And I know, you know, we don't want to make this about EXP, but it's you're asking, it's just the truth. You know, it's the revenue share side of things that that I'm really focusing on to, mm-hmm. to go and show as many agents as I can about my coaching program and how there's people out there that are willing to help you. And if you're not getting what you need for your brokerage, talk to guys like you or me and and come and find us and we can help you. Like that's I'm actually just really focusing on helping agents build that the agents that and here's the thing. I'm helping agents that want to be helped. That's what I Uh like. Because before I was helping anybody. I went and it was just, I'm just being honest, it was a waste of my time. Now I'm helping people that want to be helped. And I'm I'm excited again because uh because I love helping people, but I hate helping people that don't want to help themselves. So I just kind of cut that avenue out recently. And I'm just well, you can find out pretty quickly if they don't if people don't want to help themselves. For sure. So all right, the big the big question. So you're at Remax. How long were you at Remax? 10 years, 11 years. You're Remax 10. 10 years and you're a very cynical guy. I love it. And um, you are completely no BS and you've got a very low BS radar. How does it, a guy like you, you're going along, you're selling houses, you got your team, you're just grinding every day, looking for these big wins. How does a guy like you end up at EXP Realty with all of the agents and all of the yammering and all of the stuff going on? How do how does a guy like you of your size, your team size, your caliber, uh, not as a human, I'm not trying to give you a big head, but how yeah. does a guy like <laughs> yeah. you end up at, at EXP? How did that happen? Well, I think that in the honest truth was I was drunk in Mexico, if you want the honest story. So I'm drunk in Mexico. I get a text from somebody that says, trying to bring me to EXP. And I'll be honest, this person doesn't sell a lot of homes. I'm like, what am I going to learn? You know what I mean? Like, who cares yeah. about this? So, but I've heard about EXP for a long time. So I called another friend of mine. I said, look, get me on with the powers that be there. They're taught people that you can. And I got to, I got to learn what this is once and for all. And then, so I actually learned about it from Jay Kinder and Mike Reese, and they both got on a call. I didn't know who they were. Honestly, I had no idea who they were. And I just told them my vision and what I could do and how I was going to start a coaching program. Like I just had these, I'm a big, big vision guy. And now they've actually seen me put what I talked about into place since I met them. And they looked at me and they're like, we may have just found another Jay Kinder. I didn't know what that meant at the time. I take that now as a huge compliment, but Mike right. Reese kind of smiles and is like, we may have another Kinder on our hands. Now I am nowhere near Kinder status, but I took it as a compliment. And then in the very next day, once I talked to them, it's because they were bigger thinkers. I was talking to people at EXP and nothing against anybody, but they were selling four or five homes a year, or maybe 10. I'm like, how? I just, did, I couldn't understand it because they couldn't, they couldn't explain it to me because I'm such a big visionary. So I had to have two people that had a bigger vision than I even had to be like, oh my God, the possibilities are endless. Right. And then you kind of think about it. And if I'm not mistaken, Calgary, where I live at the time, was and still is maybe, but it's going down because of EXP's growing so big here. They were over 50% market share. So imagine being at Remax. And I was also the number one team at the number one Remax office in the world. 
and, and I had 50 listings to make that change to be like, I'm going to EXP. EXP in the city at the time before I made the move was a total joke, just being completely honest. Like there wasn't a ton of top agents, maybe a couple. And it was, it was tough. It was a hard, actually it wasn't tough. It was a really easy decision because I'm like, I know that I'm going to make it's going to grow anyway. So I might as well be first. Absolutely. And then, so I'm first, then more and more people. Dude, that's exactly how I was. And I'm not first. I mean, there's, uh, there's some well-respected people here ahead of me. That's not what I'm saying for anyone locally who's listening to this, but I just didn't took me a lot, like six years of not seeing the vision. I'm not an early adopter. You know, I don't want to jump on a risky, something risky, but you know, when I came last year, it was like 60,000 agents, you know, all it took for me was to see outside of our market that how it's number one in a lot of markets already. It's number one. So EXP is the top individual or team, I think in 47 of 50 states, right? Don't quite quote me there, or maybe 42. Anyways, they're almost in every single state. The number one individual or agent is with exp top one or two so yeah there's tons yeah. of top agents now like look at guys like dan beer and kyle whistle like these guys just crush thousands monica of figuerera yeah exactly 2200 yeah. home sales last year exactly like it's there's some really big people so i'm i'm thinking to myself what am i missing and then i was a little bit hesitant because i'm like hey well i have 50 listings i have to call 50 listings and tell them i'm switching are they going to care guess how many listings didn't come over based on yeah. you saying that zero Zero. They all didn't care. I had 50 yeah. listings that I brought over with me. They don't care. They cared about me. And then I and I wanted to make it a mission. And I went from bleeding re- hemorrhaging with Remax. I didn't bleed Remax. I hammer like I loved Remax. I was the guy that's like probably had a tattoo on my ass of Remax kind of thing. Right. And I said I'd never leave. And then I just switched. And now I'm just, you couldn't pay me, you couldn't pay me five million dollars to go back to Remax for for the opportunity. No, because uh, it's so funny. There's so many agents that say, "No, I'm not." Like they, they laugh or whatever it is that goes through their head that makes them think that being an agent owner of a company and being able to share gross revenue somehow they think that that is funny. But once you actually experience it for yourself, everybody I know who's come is annoyed with themselves that they went through such a learning curve for I the know. year or two before. And they was like, God, if I would have been here a year early, but then during that year, I would have never like this time last year, there's, you could not have convinced me to come to EXP this time last year. No, there's no way. And for me, I just, yes, you, you have to talk to the right person. And then some people just aren't ready, which is just now that you're in, it's just mind blowing. It's like, do you want to get more money for doing the same thing? Like, that's really what you should, that should be the slogan. It's like, do you want to get more money for, for doing the exact People just thing? don't believe that's possible because they don't understand how the company's built. They think it's yeah. built like everything else. You know, it's like when Hollywood video laughed at Netflix, they're not built like you. Yeah. And that's why they're able to do different things. Yeah. It's like look up Blockbuster. Where are they now? I think oh. there's one. I think there's one left. <laughs> and it's there as like a novelty. It's not even yeah. a real store. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, so since you brought your team, I mean, talking to team leaders who have big teams, they've what are you saying? If a big team leader brings a team over, what's the biggest benefit to a team leader coming from Remax or Keller sure. Williams or one of these other brands? What would you tell them? What is the biggest possible win when you bring a team over? I never forget when I first spoke to you, you said one of the big benefits is that at Remax, if an agent left your team, they left your team and that's the end. You you completely eliminated the the big team treadmill by coming to EXP. Explain that. Well, there's a couple of things that, that I've noticed. I'm like, one is that, you know, I've had people leave my team and they're still with EXP, have. I, but they're still with EXP. So I still make money from revenue share, right? So that's that you're my still point. Make, yeah, you're still making money from that. But the truth is the big thing, man, is the training. Like I don't have to train my agents anymore because in the EXP world, there's training from nine to five. So for me, if it's like, oh, Brad, you're not teaching me anything. It's like, I don't have, well, I do because I have a coaching program, but let's say that, let's say that you're a team lead. You don't have a coaching program and you're like, man, coaching my agents has taken a lot of time. And from nine till five, every single day, EXP has agents that are in the top 1% in the, in the world that are teaching different things. I don't have to teach them that. Think about how much time that saves me. And then if you're looking to be a team, what I love about team members, like when I was at Remax, each agent on my team, their cap was like 20,000 bucks. It's not even a cap, but their fees were about 20 grand a month or a year. Sorry. Now it goes <laughs> down to four grand. So imagine being able to. Because you've got, for anyone listening, it's because Brad has a team over 10. 
10 he has and, a, and you do 175. It's a mega icon team, correct? That's right. So imagine now, that's why we've blown up so big. There's these people that have dip, that are on different teams at the Remaxes in my city. They pay fifteen to twenty thousand bucks. They can come they, to you and have four. Exactly. So they make another twelve to they make another twelve to fifteen grand just by switching to my team. It's it's plus phenomenal. now. Here's the other thing that you told me, and I've heard from other lots of other team leaders. You can actually be honest with your team now. Before we had to lie to them and tell them that our staying on our team is the only option for them. You right. know. Like we have to lie to our wives and let them think that you know, we're the best thing going. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. but, at e- <laughs> but at EXP, you can actually be honest with your agents. You can grow them up to be great solo agents. You can teach them how to, to start their own team. You can teach them how to recruit to their team. And you still benefit because you're financially aligned and you get revenue share from them. I mean, it's you can't do that anywhere else. And that's why these teams are coming over. And they're thriving because, and the team agents are staying longer because they they sense that they sense that you're being genuine. Like you tell them at the beginning, yeah. I, I don't want you here forever. I want yeah. you to become bigger than me. That's one of the things you can't say at other. I mean, if you do it on other teams, and you're just going to make that treadmill go even quicker and kicking people off because they're going to be like, "Well, I need to get out of here." And I, they ask you for more money, you give it to them, and then they leave six months later. You know, that's the normal treadmill. And now. That you can make that part of when you went back to your culture and your process, you can make that part of your process, right? Yeah. Like some agents there, some agents like it. Like for me, I only take 25% of my team. So it's really hot. Like a lot of agents don't leave because if I list a home, listing a home, say costs 1500 to 2000 bucks. I, that's what I'm taking. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I don't even make any money. So so for me, I also make the splits really, really small for me personally. But the reason why I do that is because I'm looking for the right people that want to come in and grow within and build their own team kind of within my team is going to have it set it up. So my team's basically a loss leader for me right now, where if I wasn't crushing all those homes, it, it wouldn't be it. But but the cool thing is this platform allows me to do it. Whereas if that's what I want to do, it's like, I don't, ha- I don't have to run my team a conventional way. I can run my team where it's like, any way you want to any way I want. I want to grow to 100 agents is what I want on my local team. And I want five to 10 of those people to like the idea of agent attraction. And then they go and they do that thing too. That's kind of the mission of what my team's going to be is our goal is to hit 100 agents on my team. EXP has made it so that we can actually create entrepreneurs in our lives because they've given everyone's an agent owner and everyone has the opportunity to grow an organization or a team and benefit from the, the revenue share. And it, it's fa- nothing short of fantastic. I mean, that's totally, all I can say. And I have my own brokerage for 21 years, man. Yeah. 21 years. I was like, you know, I had my blinders on. I was like, no, I just want to sell houses with my, with my own company. I was, I mean, that's all I wanted to do. And I was at Century 21 for 11 years before that with my wife. I mean, I don't move around. Yeah. I, I didn't ever want to think about moving around. I can't imagine being anywhere else right now because it, it, even with me, I was on hundred percent. I went to a split. I didn't even care because I just saw there's so many more opportunities beyond that. Absolutely. Way more. Absolutely. Right. I didn't even care about that. Well, look at Chuck uh, Fazio. I get to go meet him next week. I'm very fortunate. To, uh, he's taking time. And, you know, he was the largest independent brokerage in Arizona. I think he had eight. Revelation agents. Real Estate. I mean, yeah. he had 900 agents in one building. Yeah. Nuts. Yeah. And he and he went to EXP and now he's, he's loving every second of it. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. And Frank Gray. Frank Gray had Abbey Real Estate in in uh, Texas, Houston. I think four hundred and seventy agents. He came to EXP end of last year, November, I think. Yeah, he lots was with Remax for twenty of, years. He had four Remax offices, I think. Lots of big players coming. Lots of listen, lots. dude. You've been amazing. We've gone past thirty minutes. I don't want to have anybody falling asleep listening to this. I think you've given us some amazing golden nuggets. I really appreciate you. I've been trying to get you on this, and I really appreciate you taking the time to do it. And that's that. I, I'm. I hope you have. I mean, we're halfway through the year and I hope you continue to crush it through the rest of the year. Thanks, man. You too. Yeah, I'll be come back. I, I love doing these. So, you know, if you want me back at any time, you know, I'd love to come back. No, you've been great. Thanks, man. Everyone, thank you so much for listening to Building Stronger Agents podcast today. And uh, we'll continue bringing on top-notch people so that you can grow your businesses. 